For this video, I'll be working through the 2019 uh, Level 3 Electricity Exam. Right, question one. Mobile contactless payment systems are used in shops, restaurants around New Zealand. Mobile payment machine contains a battery that can be recharged by connecting to an external 9 volt power supply. The terminal voltage of the external power supply drops to 8.6 volts when 0.33 amps of current are drawn through it. Show that the internal resistance of the external power supply is 1.2 ohms. So this is a formula that's not on your formula sheet that unfortunately you just have to memorize. Um, and it sort of goes like this. The voltage you are given, V, is equal to the EMF, which is essentially, uh, I call it the sticker voltage, or the voltage that should be on the label, so it's nine volts in this case, minus um, I little r. Technically, this is the voltage that's used by the battery. So this is the voltage drop. Um, and then we can go rearrange for the little r, because that's the resistance. That's what we're trying to find. So we're going to go um, chuck that over there. So we're going to go voltage minus the EMF, which is like the sticker voltage. So this is the voltage that comes out, which is 8.6. And then we're going to go brackets around this. This would have been equal to IR, and we're going to divide that by we'll divide that by I current, and that is equal to um, 8.6 minus 9. Is that right? Yeah, minus 9 um, divided by 0 0.33, and this will give us minus R um, because this here I, the minus sign is still there. So I'll just grab my calculator, and, and as we can see, it gives me minus 1.21. Um, but just remember, I'm going to times both sides by negative 1, and that would have gotten rid of that negative there. Um, so it should lose 1.21 ohms. Um, because this is a show question, you need to have the formula, you need the formula rearranged. Um, so maybe I should have really put equals little r, and then you have to have the actual answer. But this is probably... Close enough. Um, yeah, maybe I was being a bit lazy with that one actually. Um, while it is recharging, the payment machine displays the charging symbol on its screen. Diagram below shows a simplified mo model of the charging circuit. One moment in the recharging process. Using Kirchhoff's laws to determine the EMF for the rechargeable battery at this moment should include these two bullet points. So, equation showing the junction, so basically the current law, and then show the, the current at I3 is. Um, 0.2 amps, but we're trying to find the EMF of the rechargeable battery at this moment, which is this voltage here. So we're trying to find this voltage here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do our first um, equation, and we can see that I1 is going in, and I2 and I3 are going out. So we can say that I1 is, what, is equal to I2 plus I3. Um, and we, what do we know? We know that we have a loop that goes all the way out around the outside that only has one voltage source. Um, so we have to do, so this is a conservation of uh, charge. Now we have a conservation of energy, which is just going to be the sum of the voltages. Um, so the way I like teach it to my kids um, is we're going to do, we're going to go around, oh, that's, that's clockwise, we're going to go around clockwise. So we're going to start here, and we're just going to go around in a clockwise and do a closed loop because the sum of well, you get conservation of energy in a closed loop. Some of the voltages add to, add to zero in a closed loop. So we're going to go positive nine volts because we're going from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. We're going to up the potential, so we're gaining energy, and then we're going to keep on going down. Now we're just to here, and then we're going. If you were to think of this as like the the flow of current is like a we're swimming in a river. If you go from like this, like further upstream to downstream, you're losing energy. So this is going to be minus, we're going to have minus, I hope we can see that, um, I3 times 18 ohms, because um, this is current times resistance, which equals voltage. And all, all these here are voltages. Um, I'm not going to bother putting the units for that. It's just going to be I3 18, I3 times 18, whatever. Um, and then same again, minus 25. I3, and then I keep on going around, all the way around, and this here is I1, because I1 would have started at this node, 
goes up through here, through here. So this is the same sort of stream. If you can think of it like water. Water is a terrible analogy in trying to understand like the paradoxes that happen, but it's a great analogy in trying to get your head around it when you're not that physically, you know, you're not that, you don't think like a robot. Um, right, so we're gonna go, we're gonna go down this one as well. So we're gonna be losing potential minus, um, what is it? Uh, I'm gonna put I1 times 1.2 um, and that all equals to zero. So now I'm just gonna add, I'm gonna like calculate this out and rearrange for I3. So we can, oh, I'll just do that now. So I've just added the two I3s together and then I minus, or I add, I times these two together because I1 is equal to 0 0.333. Um, now I'm gonna shift the nine and the 0.4 onto this side. So I should get, minus nine, and then if I add 0.4, I should get, um, this should be equal to 43i3 minus 43i3 is equal to, and then it's gonna be negative nine plus four, which equals negative 8.6. And now I'm gonna divide both sides by 43, so I just chuck this over here. I, oops, I3 is equal to minus 8.6 divided by minus 43, and that's probably gonna be equal to 0 0.2. What do you know, it is two. So now we've got, I'm guessing that's probably the merit point because this is possibly an excellence question. Probably not. This is a really hard. Um, what do you call it, achieve? Oh, this has gotta be merit, anyway. Um, so we, got, we need to put amps because it's the current. So we've shown that I3 is 0 0.2. We need to determine the EMF of the battery at this moment. So we need to determine this voltage here. Um, and to do that, well now we can figure out what I2 is um, because I1 minus I3 equals I2, which equals, um, what is I1? I1 is 0.33, so I'll just do that now. So we get uh, 0.133 amps, so we're in I1 minus I3. Um, now I've got this current flowing through here. All I need to do is another loop. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do, a, I just thought about this for a second. I'll do this loop because it's probably gonna be easier. So I'm gonna go around clockwise this way. I'm gonna run out of space. This is definitely an excellence question. They don't give you enough blooming space. Righto. Um, so I'm gonna go, Start it here, so start at the battery. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna call that the EMF. I'll call this that funny little E symbol. Hopefully we can see that, I'll just shift it up a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna go positive E, because oh, I don't know what that is. That's the voltage I'm looking for. And then I'm going minus, um, and that is gonna be, what's I3? I3 is 0.2, so minus 0.2 times 18, and then we go minus, 0.2 times 25, and then I go, oh, I'm going against this current, because we can see it has a current flowing downwards, I2 is flowing downwards, so we're gonna go plus, because we're going up the stream of the river, we're gaining potential energy, it's kind of the analogy to do it. Um, so it's gonna be plus, uh, what is I2? I2 is, where do we find it out? Um, 1.3, so we're gonna go 1 point, uh, 0 0.133, because I just figured that out, times 9.8 equals zero. So we can see all these here are just numbers, so I'm just gonna add them all up. And I end up with, you can see that there on my calculator, I add them all up, so I get the EMF minus 7.2966 is equal to zero. In other words, I was call this the EMF is equal to 7.3 volts. Oh, what are they giving? They give, everything, that's four S, no, that's two SF. I should give this to three zero. Yep, volts. That was a tricky question. I haven't done one of these for a long time, so they probably won't do it again for a long time. Right. Circuit inside the contactless car does not have its own power source. It's powered by induction. P, uh, induction using pair of coils, um, simplified model. Yes, yeah, so we've got induction there, another, like with the 
magnetic field running through, there's one cool, there's another cool. Using physics principles, explain how voltage is induced in the coil of the contactless card when it's placed near the coil of the payment machine. Um, so I'll just pause right and explain. Right, so I've said the alternating current in the coils of the payment machine, so this fella here, will generate an alternating magnetic field which passes through the card's coil. As you can see, there's a magnetic field lines passing through the card's coil. Um, this alternating magnetic field inside the card creates charge separation and induces a voltage. One thing I did forget to talk about um, is the size of the voltage. So the voltage created depends on the rate of change of flux. Flux is just how many field lines are in that area. The formula I'll just chuck in here is uh, the magnetic field times the area. It's just a more quantitative, quantitative way to talk about magnetic fields. Um, and I'll just chuck the formula down. I'm guessing, well, I already know, I already know the answer schedule, but this is definitely excellence because it's really, really hard. Um, and they don't give you enough space. It's hard for a year 13 anyway. Um, this sh could be an excellence question, but they've already gave you a, a hard question. So NCA, they only give you one excellence and two merits and will achieve. So you've, I'll probably end up over answering this. Um, and then the last question, at a frequency of, what is that? 13.6 megahertz times 10 to the 6 contactless car induction coil has a reactance of what is it 427 ohms um, the contactless card contains a capacitor in series with coil and causes a circuit only to resonate at this frequency um, to state the condition under which resonance occurs and then calculate the capacitance that is needed for this um, resonance um, so I'll just I'll just write it out first and then um, I'll go through the calculations so I've said resonance occurs when the reactance of the inductor is equal to the reactance of the capacitor, which pretty much just means 427 is equal to Xc, which is the reactance of the capacitor, because we're just trying to find the capacitance needed for this. Um, so if you go into your formula sheet, you'll see, uh, where is it, Xc is um, 1 over omega C, which is just the angular frequency, um, which should be a C. Yep, so that should be equal to 1 over um, omega C. Um, and now I'm just going to rearrange for C, so I'll just flip this fraction and I'll flip that. So I end up with 1 over 4 to, uh, 427 is equal to uh, 2 pi F C. Um, and then I have C down here, which is divided by both sides by 2 pi F, is equal to 1 over... And we've got, was it 427? 427 times 2 pi times, and what's the frequency? 1 point, uh, what 13.6 times 10 to the 6. And then I'll just chuck that into my calculator. And as you can see, I get 2.74 times 10 to the negative 11. Uh, 2 point, and uh, yep, 74 times 10 to the negative 11. And because it's cap capacitance, it's in farads. Um, and I've done that for 3SF because that was 3SF and that was 3SF. Um, but I mean, it's, I'm pretty, pretty lazy with this whole question actually. But yeah.